In the heart of Hertfordshire is an equine veterinary practice that deals with over 10,000 cases of sick and injured horses every year. Jason Tyrrell is the owner. Together with his team of three full-time vets, there's almost nothing these professionals can't handle. From back to front, inside and out, they examine, extract and enter their equine patients with single-minded determination. In this pilot, we'll get a flavour of their characters and their day-to-day -day work. Coming up, Catherine gets up close and personal with a three-year-old stallion. Oh, proper job today. They're a little stiff today. Jane gets stuck into thistle, an 11-year-old mare. Clotted blood in there. And a brush with the dentist reveals some nasty decay. Let's take a suit to the owner and see whether she'll let you x-ray that tooth. Jason Tyrrell and his vets treat their equine patients 365 days a year. And almost every one of them brings a new set of challenges. First in the stocks this morning is Bodie Robinson, a seven-year-old gelding who's in for a possible toothache. Tongue's loose and floppy. A horse's teeth take up more space in their head than their brains, so finding the problem isn't a simple procedure. Um, what we can see, we just see part of the crown, which is maybe about that much, and they have these massive long roots, you know, so embedded within the bone, they have these great long tooth roots, like horses' teeth are really long. Um, so depending on the age of the horse and what's wrong, um, sometimes they do need a tooth extracted. Sometimes you'll try and do it this way, have them sedated and extract them orally under sedation, or occasionally you do need to give them a general anaesthetic and remove their teeth that way. Um, let's rasp them. Do we do them. that? Do you do dentistry? Yeah, we do, and we do do oral extractions. Um, absolutely. Uh, Jason's your dentist. <laughs> He's the man. Horses' teeth are softer than humans, so they use a different type of toothbrush. So it just cuts um, on the, when you pull it this way, when you go that way, it doesn't um, rasp them, but when, on the pull, it, it shaves the tooth. <laughs> Most people would have their horse's teeth routinely rasped like this um, to prevent them from getting any sharp enamel points. It's not very nice, is it? Out in the yard, Jason and Ricardo were trying to identify one of the most common horse problems on 12-year-old Smarty, a nab strap across. Well, this horse has been presented with us for a lameness, so... It's actually Ricardo's case, our vet out there, and he just wants a double check on it. Um, so it's been lame in front for... How long has it been lame for, Ricardo? Uh, two About two weeks. So what we're looking at here is just we're trotting around on a hard circle to see whether we can exacerbate the lameness to make it easier for us to see. We're just spinning around on the opposite rein to see, see what he does. A horse like Smarty weighs over 700 pounds, which is a lot of pressure being supported by comparatively thin legs. Again, you can just see when his, when his left fore now hits the ground, there's a slight nod of his head downwards. There, there, there. I think he's slightly worse on this rein, isn't he? So he's, he's got a lameness on both, both legs um, when he's trotting around on this circle, what we call the right-hand circle, he's showing a lameness on his right fore. He's trotting around on the left circle, he's showing a lameness on his left fore. So now the question is, what's causing that lameness? So Ricardo can find nothing when he's just looking at the horse and examining it. So what we'll do is we'll put some local anaesthetic into his legs and the idea that if you find the area that's sore and you put some local anaesthetics in, um, the horse will go sound, so we won't see that lameness. And therefore, we've identified the area. Then once you've identified the area, we then have to x-ray it and scan it and see whether we can actually find out what the cause of it is in that area. So that's what we spend a lot of our time doing. <laughs> a lot of our time. Last year, Jason's vets travelled over 40,000 miles to work on the equine patients. Catherine Seagrot is on her way to meet a three-year-old stallion. Days like today when the sun shines, it's just a great job. I love being a vet. So you get to be out and about and see people and um, there really isn't anything comparable, to be honest with you. Why didn't you want to be an equine vet? Um, 
I always wanted to be, because I grew up with horses, my mother bred them, um, and it was always something that I knew I would end up being an equine vet. But initially I wanted to go and work in Africa and go with, and work with wild animals. I just, that was, when I went to vet school, that was my plan, and that's what I was going to do. And then as you go through vet school, you realise that those kind of jobs are so few and far between. And, and so I thought, well, I might as well crack on and start doing the equine side of things. And, you know, I, I found it in a way easy because that's what I grew up with. Um, and I love working with horses. So I just thought, well, I'll try and be the best horse clinician I can be. So what was your specialism? Castration? Medicine. <laughs> medicine and stud medicine. So I suppose like castration might come under the stud medicine bit. <laughs> I don't know. There's always an element of unpredictability with horses, and any horse can be dangerous when provoked. Oh, no. Here we go. We'll just go around here. Hello, handsome. You do look like a stallion, don't you? Is he quite gaulty? Yeah. Okay. All right, come and step back. Come on, honey. Oh, proper job today. Are we? Hey? All right. An open wound on a horse is just as susceptible to infection as one on a human. So anything that's in these packets is sterile. So I'm not going to touch or open anything until I've got sterile gloves on as well. Chavajo, a three-year-old, has been sedated with Demosedon. But now it's time for some local anaesthetic. Speed is the name of the game. If you're nice and quick, they don't really feel it. Um, if you're not very confident in doing it, they will start to feel it. That was a two inch needle, so I put it right up the cord. And then I'm gonna come out now. Just, they're a little stiff today. Each testicle is protected by a tough layer of skin, which calls for some serious pliers. Basically, I'm going to get the first testicle down into the scrotal sac. And you can see the swelling here. This is because I put a load of local in. So that's where I'm going to make the incision um, straight across there. So just in case you... So it does... They do tend to feel it a little bit through the skin. Good boy. There you are. So you see how that just pops away. And then this is your testicle. But you want to go through a little area that doesn't have any blood vessels, because that's what I'm going to put my emasculators through. This is the bit that I start to groan and sweat if <laughs> they're big and three-year-old colt. You get a nice yearling and I'll make it look easy. There you are, lad. So, that's all it. Quite a good size one as well. <laughs> one down and one to go. But not all the fun happens outdoors. Jason employs four other members of staff at Tyrrell's and they all have a central role to play in the smooth running of the practice. What do you do, Fiona? Uh, well, I'm supposed to be the practice manager, so I tend to um, try and oversee everything and um, make sure that it runs smoothly and keep an eye on computers and stocks and um, just hopefully the smooth running of the office. How long have you been working with Jason? Have you been? I've been I've been working with Jason ever since he's been here, and he's been here. I think it's ten years now. But I've actually been with the practice for sixteen, seventeen. I worked for the um, previous vet that sold the practice to Jason, um, and uh, so Jason inherited me. I still don't know if he's happy with that. <laughs> Ricardo is still trying to find out where Smarty's lameness lies. While the anaesthetic block takes effect, there's a chance to find out about his training. How long have you been here then, or over in uh, England? I've been in England about what, two and a half months, three months. Very different to Just, uh, it, it is, it, you know, every place it, it's, it's different, but at the end of the day they're all horses, so, and it's all horse people. So. But uh, it's good. How, how do you find the English horse people compared to, say, Spanish horse people? Uh, I, I actually have never worked in Spain. Um, even like my undergraduate was in the States um, and then moved to Germany and then so I've been moving around a bit. I studied in Hungary and I went back to Germany uh, and then I was working in Ireland for the last couple of years. So, um, so tell you the truth, I was one of the horse people from Spain and I rode a little bit but I, I never worked over there so I, I couldn't really tell you. How are you finding getting around? Sadness. 
the best investment ever. <laughs> Sam is the veterinary nurse. She spends most of her time helping the vets around the yard. She's also the queen of the twitch, a restraining device that keeps horses calm when they're being prodded and poked. Sometimes they won't let you put it on at all. Um, they're either had a bad experience with it in the past or they just don't like you touching their nose. If that's the case, we can either try a neck twitch sometimes works. So you do a similar kind of thing, you're holding a piece of skin very firmly, um, just as an extra kind of um, piece of control. But again, that sometimes doesn't work. Um, sometimes we can use a really small amount of sedation that doesn't work, doesn't last very long. Um, just long enough for us to get the block in, give him five minutes for it to take effect and then trot him up. But you don't ideally want to do that because the sedation will affect him moving. Next time on The Horse Vets, Jane prepares for the breeding season. It's not the most fun job in the world. Jason gets stuck into Brody's teeth. He is the dentist. Oh, it's got a massive diaster in there, and it's yeah. got a big old rotten. Ooh. Catherine deduces who's crashed into her car. Yes, it transpired my boss has driven into my car and then drove off without telling me. And Jane's vets prepare for surgery. Um, this is what we call our knockdown recovery box, and we winch them through and put them onto yeah, our surgical table next door.